Audrey Hepburn was one of the most successful actresses during the golden age of Hollywood. She won the hearts of millions of people through her films and the charity work she did in lots of different countries. In this video, we'll look at her life and her struggle with cancer and eventual death. Moving around in Europe. Hepburn was born in 1929 to Joseph Victor Anthony Rustin and Ella Van Heemstra. Her mother was a Dutch noblewoman who became a British citizen after marrying Hepburn's father. Joseph worked for a trading company, but soon started working for a loan company after getting married. Hepburn and her family moved around in Europe for a while during her early years and eventually settled in Linkbeek. Thanks to the peripatetic nature of her life, she was able to learn six languages – Dutch, English, French, German, Spanish, and Italian. Hepburn's father walked out on the family in 1935 when Hepburn was six. It broke her heart and she often talked about the effect it had on her in the later years of her life. Her father frequently took part in fascist activities in London. Hepburn's parents divorced in 1939 and she moved to Kent, England with her mother and started studying at an independent school in Elm. Moving to the Netherlands. After World War II broke out in 1939, Hepburn's mother took her daughter and moved to the Netherlands. She was hoping that the Netherlands would remain neutral during the war, but the Germans invaded the Netherlands in 1940. Hepburn changed her name to Etta van Heemstra so she wouldn't get into trouble with the Germans. One of her uncles was executed for participating in resistance activities and one of her half-brothers was sent to Berlin to work in a German labor camp. Black Evenings in the Netherlands According to a book written by Robert Matson, Hepburn helped the resistance by raising money through silent dancing. The events where her performances happened were called Black Evenings because the windows were blacked out and the crowd would be completely silent throughout the performances. Hepburn said, The best audiences I ever had made not a single sound at the end of my performance. The war left a deep impact on Hepburn, who was 15 when it came to an end. During the war, Hepburn became depressed and suffered from malnutrition. Many people in the Netherlands didn't have any medical supplies or food. Starvation was ubiquitous during the war. Hepburn had to give up dancing after some time because she had become too weak. In some of her interviews, she said she sometimes ingested tulip bulbs and even tried to bake grass into bread. End of World War II and Film Debut The war finally ended in 1945 and Hepburn moved to Amsterdam with her family. She started focusing on dancing again and began taking ballet classes from Sonia Gaskell and the Russian teacher Olga Tarasova. Her family lost a lot of money during the war, so her mother started working as a cook and housekeeper. The first film Hepburn starred in was the 1948 educational travel film Dutch in Seven Lessons. She received a ballet scholarship from Ballet Rambert and soon moved to London. While living in London, she worked as a part-time model to earn some money. Rambert, founder of the dance company, told Hepburn that she might not be able to become prima ballerina because she was short and weak so she decided to become an actress. Freelance acting and being discovered by a casting director. Hepburn performed as a chorus girl in the musicals High Button Shoes, Sauce Tartare, and Sauce Picante. Her performance in Sauce Picante caught the attention of a casting director who got her registered as a freelance actress with the Associated British Picture Corporation, ABPC. She had some minor roles in the films One Wild Oat, Laughter in Paradise, Young Wives' Tale, and the Lavender Hill Mob. Her first major role was in the 1952 film The Secret People as a ballerina. She performed in the Broadway play Gigi in 1951 and won a Theatre World Award for her role. Her big breakthrough Hepburn moved to America in 1952 and was cast in the 1953 romantic comedy film Roman Holiday. The producer's first choice was Elizabeth Taylor, but the director, William Wyler, thought Hepburn was better suited for the role. Hepburn's co-star, Gregory Peck, was so impressed he told Wyler that Hepburn's name should appear next to the title of the film. It was originally written in much smaller font beneath Peck's name. Peck said, You've got to change that because she'll be a big star and I'll look like a big jerk. Roman Holiday was a box office hit and it turned Hepburn into a big star. For her performance in the film, Hepburn won an Academy Award for Best Actress, a BAFTA Award for the Best British Actress in a Leading Role, and a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress Motion Picture Drama. 
While receiving the Academy Award, she was so excited she kissed Academy President John Herschel on the mouth. More films and awards. She signed a seven-picture contract with Paramount and was featured on the cover of Time magazine in 1953. After Roman Holiday, she starred in the 1954 comedy film Sabrina and won an Academy Award for Best Actress nomination and the BAFTA Award for Best Actress in a Leading Role. She won a Tony Award for Best Performance by a Leading Actress in a Play for her performance in the 1954 Broadway play Ondine. She is one of the three actresses who's won the Academy and Tony Awards for Best Actress in the same year. She starred as Natasha Rostova in the 1956 film adaptation of War and Peace. She also starred in the 1957 musical Funny Face and a romantic comedy film Love in the Afternoon. Two of her most well-known and successful roles were in the films The Nun Story and Breakfast at Tiffany's. For her performance in The Nun Story, Hepburn researched the role for a year. She said, I gave more time, energy, and thought to this role than to any of my previous screen performances. She considers her role in Breakfast at Tiffany's as the jazziest of my career. She said she had some trouble playing the role because she was an introvert and the film character was an extrovert. Retirement from film and activism. Hepburn decided to retire from acting in 1967. She married Italian physicist Dr. Andre Doty in 1969 and a year later gave birth to her son, Luca Doty. She still made appearances on the big screen sometimes, but devoted most of her time to her family. She was appointed a goodwill ambassador of UNICEF in 1989. She traveled to Ethiopia as part of her first mission for UNICEF and provided food to an orphanage in Mekele that had 500 starving children. She traveled to Turkey in the same year on an immunization campaign. She also went to South America two months after her visit to Turkey. In 1989, she traveled to Central America and Bangladesh. UN photographer John Isaac said, Often the kids would have flies all over them, but she would just go hug them. Children would just come up to hold her hand, touch her. She was like the Pied Piper. President George Bush gave her the Presidential Medal of Freedom for her work with UNICEF. Being diagnosed with abdominal cancer. In 1992, Hepburn visited Somalia, and when she came back, she started suffering from abdominal pain. Upon getting it checked by a doctor, she found out that she was suffering from a rare form of abdominal cancer. She underwent chemotherapy after her surgery and then returned to Switzerland where she celebrated her last Christmas with her family. She died in her sleep in 1993. Her funeral was attended by her family members and friends, and Gregory Peck recited the poem Unending Love on TV after her death. She was ranked third in the American Film Institute's list of greatest female stars of all time. And she has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. What's your favorite movie by Audrey Hepburn? Let us know in the comments below and hit the subscribe button for more amazing celebrity videos.